Bruce Campbell. What's going on? Hi, Bruce. Good Making morning, his way in. Good see you again. What's going on, Hi, man? There. Good morning. I happen to be in the neighborhood that I stop in. Yes. You're always welcome here. Right. Welcome. Key question. There we go. Oh, you're <laughs> well, there we go. Look at you. You look fantastic. Well, pocket it's New York square, City, man. matching the shirt, yeah. matching every a pocket poof. Is that what it is? A pocket ah, poof? That's not a pocket square. <laughs> when did you when did you uh get interested in uh in the way you dress? I was so just, I oh sorry. I was interested <laughs> way way back when and then I had kids. And then it went out the window for fifteen years and now it's back. Why did it go out the window? Uh because kids I wore fanny uh, packs and you know uh, socks and sandals in those days. It was hot. It was a hot look. <laughs> just still wear fanny, fanny pack? Yeah, I still yeah. do when I travel. I love just a good really? fanny pack. Oh, it's the worst. I love a good fanny pack. <laughs> they are uh, stylistically horrifying, but uh, functionally astute. What's better than getting on a plane, everybody's empty and shit, and you just throw your fanny pack Boom. on, and you're like, done. done. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. It's amazing what it expands to also. I mean, the crap that you can put in there. Yeah, absolutely. My license, my ID. I'm just going to sit here and ruin just, this interview by uh, listing shit I put in my fanny pack. We got outer zippers, too. They were more sophisticated than people realize. I love a good fanny pack, though, and I say that with no irony. I genuinely enjoy a good yeah. fanny pack. Maybe that's my problem. I haven't been exposed to the right fanny packs. I don't think there is a right fanny pack. <laughs> yeah, me neither. But there's a practical fanny pack. But those days are over. So now, yeah, you do look very good. You're well, in the old days, we there was a there was a a church in a rich suburb of Detroit mm -hmm. that gave away uh, they you could give you could give your clothes there and they give them away to, they'd sell it for charity for the church. All, it was where all the rich people took their clothes, mm -hmm. and this was great stuff. So you could get a, a a wool a wool suit that was lined in silk for twenty bucks. Jesus. Yeah. You get it tailored for 20 bucks, 45 bucks, man. You're looking sharp in, in the Motor City. And that's how we raised our money for Evil Dead, the first Evil Dead. We we all wore these secondhand suits and bought Montgomery, um, Montgomery Ward briefcases. <laughs> and we looked like we were businessmen. How old are you at that point? 21. Okay. All right. So you're not in high school. No, no, just after though. You know, yeah. not too far after. So you guys knew you wanted to finance this movie. You had a script, and you just had zero money. We had no idea how to get the money though. Uh, it's one thing. Sam had an idea. He had a script. We met a guy, Rob Tappert, who seemed to think he knew how to get money. The good news is he was a a young renegade, so his family had a family lawyer because he was always in trouble. So we went to his lawyer and said, "How do we raise money?" He goes, "You got to create a thing, like an entity." Right. To then approach businessmen and you speak their language and you show them that you're not full of crap. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. And then we showed them a little Super 8 movie. We used to do a lot of Super 8 movies in high school. And we did a Super 8 short version of Evil Dead. And we showed that to investors. And then took their money. <laughs> and it was a long, grueling process. It really was. It was. It took three three plus years to make the original movie. Uh, to me, the horrifying part of Evil Dead, it was all very scary, was the, the, uh, the angle following the, mm -hmm. the, the, that was the, the most genius thing in it. And the tree branch was the very evil, The evil entity. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was frightening. Did you shoot that in the, uh, the demo reel? Uh, yeah, we did shoot some of that. Exactly. So what? it, it was good for us, too, to sort of Get our horror chops. We had only made silly three Three Stooges comedies before that. Horror was new to us. Right. This wasn't something I grew up on. I didn't read any of that crap. So how did you? How did you and Sam know how to shoot that stuff? Like, was it just like trial and error? Like, let's. What if we do this with the camera? A lot of it is Sam. He um he's got a real crazy. He's a he he was a magician. That's how I I first hung out with him. I was his assistant. Hung low, <laughs> and we would wear lab coats and uh, we would appear for bar mitzvahs and things like that and he would hit me and he saw the audience liked it when he hit me sure. <laughs> so he associated that i get that he associated my pain with entertainment right and he never stopped yeah. so that's kind of how <laughs> that career on began. was he a good magician he was a good magician because mm. every day at four o'clock he turned into a bar <laughs> no I, uh, hey, come on no, come on hey, 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 Let's keep it above the belt. <laughs> no, Sam was, uh, he looked very sleight of hand. And what are movies? The ultimate sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. The angles that you use, what you show, the editing. Uh, he, he's the only director I know who read the American Cinematographer's Manual, which is the most boring, make you want to hang yourself uh, book. It's all the technical side of cameras and shutters and apertures and F-stops, T-stops. Forget it. Yeah. But he, he's like, I have to know this. 
I have this camera in my hand. What can it do? What can I make it do? Right. And it's impressive what he made it do. See, that is impressive because, like, I feel like so many, especially young directors, student directors, whatever, instead of looking at a camera going, what can I make it do, are just looking at other movies and being like, oh, just do that. No, yeah. no question about it. And we, on the original Evil Dead, we had days where we filmed for 12 hours and got one shot. Oh, Jesus. Sam would be fired. <laughs> He'd be much. fired in three days today. <laughs> he would. Um, you know, in the TV world, by lunch, you've killed the bad guy. Little Billy got his medicine back, and, you know, you've, you've kissed your co-star. It happens so fast. But Sam's shot is, if his shot is, I want to be tracking with Ash from one din- window to the other above him and s- even be above the rafters of the cabin. How do we get that? Wow. And we're like, yeah, how do we get that? <laughs> so we would spend the whole day figuring out how to get that shot. So then when you get into uh, doing other movies, like after this thing, it's a success and blah, 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 and, and you have a mainstream career and everything, <laughs> yeah. do you go back to Sam and be like, you're not supposed to do it that way. Like, we can go way quicker than that. It was only, Sam still goes slow, though. He does. Oh, it, not much has changed. <laughs> just He just has a, you know, there's a... Now he has resources, though. Yeah. It's even more horrifying because Sam can go, <laughs> no, no, here's what I want to do with the camera now. Mm-hmm. And all of his Holly, all the effects wizards in Hollywood, they're not going to say no. They love these crazy visual challenges. So it's impressive to watch, but boy, as a director of those movies, you've got to have, an, you have, a, you have, to have an attention span. I mean, the detail of this crap of shooting, all these effects, the layers and, you know, shooting... Ash vs. Evil Dead, the new show, there's nothing as an easy shot. There's not an easy shot in the whole show. Right. You're either green screen or some fake driving shot where you're projecting images on the car while you have the background plates playing that have to be shot beforehand, you know. None of it. No, it's, none of it's two guys sitting and talking. Do you like green screen? <laughs> huh? Do you like using green screen or do you like the all-wear shooter? Green, green screen, it's just a modern-day tool. And it used to be blue screen. Now everything's green screen. Before right. that, it was called chroma key. Before yeah. that, they had front screen projection. So it's going to change. It'll, pretty soon they'll go, we don't even need green screen. Just, we'll just, just do it. We'll just add it in. Do it, yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll just change it later. What do you yeah. hate that movies do? Like, Is there anything you do like a movie it, that's It's all cheap? technical. It's so technical. It's like me talking to you, but you're a tennis ball on a stick. <laughs> and then I, because you can't be there because you're a monster and you're being made up and we're not ready for you yet. It's all that. It's, it's again. It's the deconstruction of a scene of just two guys talking. But right. now it it's got to be broken into forty seven components. Yeah. It's tedious. Movies are really tedious. I loved it. That's why I like TV. Well, we, let's go, man. We're shooting. When you, you know, were, you're on you, set at seven. You're, the first shot is about seven twenty. Yeah, like, you don't like saying it's a real case to sit around and wait. That's hurry up and wait. God damn it! I <laughs> fucked, yeah, fucked it up. God. <laughs> <laughs> Worst. <laughs> and uh, by the way, the show is eight o'clock on Stars. Yes. Um, on Sunday. Night. Ash versus Evil Dead. Uh, when you did Fargo, did they do Fargo? Because I mean, it's, it, that is one of the greatest TV series they've done in quite some time. Fargo, the movie or the TV show? The TV show. I'm the only actor who's been in both. Were you yeah, in the that. movie? Hell yeah. I told you he was in the movie. He <laughs> didn't believe me. I didn't say it. You didn't say it. When the guy's putting a leg in the chipper. Yep. It's oh, near that? the end of the movie. <laughs> uh, the other guy's watching a shitty soap opera. Uh-huh. And I'm in the shitty soap opera. And they, so did they film the soap opera for the... <laughs> no. The Coen Brothers, uh, n- the producer of the Coen Brothers was an old high school buddy of mine. He knew that I had done a really bad soap opera years before. And he oh, goes... it's great. He goes, let's just get the footage. Just get get the rights uh. to it. it. Costs like a dollar. <laughs> so that's what they did. They got they. It was something we had filmed years before. And then did the people who did the TV show? Did they have any idea that that connection existed? No. Like was no no. So that was just a happy coincidence. Except for the same producer, John Cameron. So he he then brought me in to do Ronald Reagan. Right, right. TV you show. did. You, you sat down and you said, "Well, you did a little Reagan." There when you, you first go said, again. <laughs> How can you not? Once you, once you look, I, my kids grew up in the Reagan era, all the eighties. You couldn't get the guy off TV. Yeah. There you go. He was the scolder in chief. You just you do Reagan, I do Clinton. We that's awesome. Now what's your Clinton? Let's hear a little bit of your Clinton. Ah, uh, fuck the black hooker behind oh some my bushes. God. <laughs> so it's not really what how he does it; it's what he says. <laughs> that's it. It's the content. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. wow. right. That's dead on. Oh my god. Bill, are That's, you here? I oh my god. My shoulder. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's here. That's yeah. actually an excerpt from his uh, autobiography. I oh man. <laughs> yes. Well, you'll you'll appreciate I I met him once. I met him in Miami. How was he when you meet him? Hilarious. He is, right? Oh, uh <laughs> we 
it, it was a function for Haiti, some some relief thing. I know it. I saw you and Eve. I've chased women through the woods you're like close. that. You're close. <laughs> you're close. <laughs> he yells like that. No, we, we got the guy who was his assistant told us, me and the star of Burn Notice, he goes, if you guys get near the end of the line, he'll have more time. If you get near the front of the line, he's got to blow right, past right. you. Yeah. We're like, good advice. Yeah. Got way near the end. We're 20 feet away. He looks over at us. He goes, oh, man. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like how you did it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love your show. <laughs> and we literally, both of us, we look behind us. We were like, <laughs> he's not talking about <laughs> us, is he? Yeah, you thought maybe Dennis Hoff from the exactly. Bunny Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally, we finally get up there, and he says the words. He goes, burn notice is my favorite show. You play my favorite character. He's saying this to me. Sam, we're both over the hill warriors. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. Bill Clinton was watching Burn Notice? Yeah, because he goes, Hillary's gone all week. This is when she was Secretary of State. So I'm home. I watch the show. Oh, it's a good show. Where's the girl? <laughs> yeah. he, he did. He did end it with that. Where's the girl? That's pretty. That's gotta be pretty great. That's hilarious. He said he did it when when Hillary had pneumonia. Bill was like, "Well, I watch a lot of TV. I saw on TV that she had pneumonia. I guess he's just watching all his programs." Oh, I'm telling you, man, I watch the show all the time. It's my favorite character. No, he needs. Well, he, he, that, that was his cover show because he has yeah. to. He has to explain what he does when she's gone. Burn I was notice. watching Burn Notice. Burn Notice, my favorite show. Those ladies are lying. I was watching a Burn Notice marathon. Right, and USA would be running Burn. Notice yeah. like nonstop, so it's like uh, yeah. you're all good. You're all good. I like to go in the it's basement the, just like yeah. Evil Dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the one show that you could pick and it would make sense. It's like Law and Order. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the other yeah. one. Yeah. Right. Notice and Law and Order. Perfect. Yeah. Well, what I was going to ask you about Fargo was did they shoot that like a TV show or a movie? Sort of both. Yeah. They have instructions. <laughs> they, uh, the, the show creator, uh, Noah Hawley, is he. You know they have rules um, <laughs> because they don't want it to be un uh, un Fargo ish. Right. When the Coen brothers shoot their movies, they Roger Deakins is the guy who's their cinematographer. They use certain lenses. They don't use. They're not telephoto guys. When mm -hmm. you look at a Coen brothers movie, for some reason they like to kind of be with you in the room. They're not guys who shoot like. 24 right where it's like you're always on a 600 millimeter lens and they're finding you down the street because they think it looks cool mm -hmm. they you can't there's a certain rule like no lens uh deeper than a certain like focal length yeah because then it would not look like the show so they have those kind of rules but so it does it doesn't look like a standard but the pace of it is tv pace uh, or not really shooting it it's weird they um they're not they don't race along Huh. And, it, and it was funny to hear Kirsten Dunst go, oh, the the workload of television. I'm like, yeah, welcome to the program. <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's a workload. You got to do it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask if there were any other, if Bill Clinton was like the peak of sort of famous. I mean, Bill Clinton is beyond famous, but fans, n notable fans to stuff that you've done. Beyond um, burn notice and any, you know, whatever. Well, who could we possibly had, be bigger than... Right? Well, Did we you just get an email from Bin Laden? <laughs> but we had heard uh, Alice Cooper. <laughs> Alice Cooper's favorite horror film is Evil Dead. That's cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. Coming from him. Um, I think Charlie Sheen likes to smoke uh, marijuana and watch Evil Dead 2. Oh, that's great. But I think, watching Philadelphia. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia? <laughs> Smoke marijuana and watch Philadelphia? <laughs> sure. Because it becomes funny? <laughs> oh, my God. I've never heard of that. <laughs> Something Jim's done in his yeah, past. Well, yeah, well, I was saying, you know, there's a that little sounds, tie in there. That sounds yeah. cynical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna watch Philadelphia. Yeah. What, what do you think makes a great horror film? What do you think makes a shitty horror film? Because it's it's weird what works and what doesn't work. Like yeah. you watch a horror movie and it just like the Evil Dead just ca even the new one was fucking Friday. It just captures something, and I, I can't describe whether it's tension or it's just a creepy atmosphere. But so many movies miss it, and then some movies just have that. This whole phase there there was a phase that's sort of ending. It was torture porn. Yes. Where you put mm. a guy's wiener in a vice and poke it with a stick for half an hour. Sure, it's like those. you know what, <laughs> um, you know you can do that. And yeah. in filmmaking wise, that doesn't really require any skill. Uh, what takes the skills? Building suspense. It's really the same old stuff of figuring out what a scene is, like how to how to mount a scene, how to stage a scene. For one, like where to even put the actors. And if a director doesn't know how to do that. A scene's going to play weird. And if a director's not on top of his actors, it's going to seem weird. Like Evil Dead, unfortunately, the original one, 
comes across as funny because you have inexperienced actors saying crappy dialogue. That's a bad combo. <laughs> it's still scary, though. But it's still it, a scary It was movie. Once, once the creature started. I think what it is is Sam, Sam's approach was once the horror started, you can't stop it. Most of the classic horror movies, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. Once that chainsaw got fired up, it pretty much didn't end until the end. Right. And it was it it hit a relentless point. Yeah, because yeah. before like before before it's a horror movie in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, just annoying Franklin in his yeah. wheelchair. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah just, you're like what are you yeah. watching? Yeah, <laughs> and then and then it goes then it busts open. Yeah, the hills have eyes. The same sort of old classic seventies. Uh, yeah. That's ones. that's you know the, the first rated R movie I ever saw was on Wameco Home Theater, WHT. My friend Bill D'Angelo. Uh, I love his, Bill D'Angelo. Yeah, Bill D'Angelo. <laughs> and his parents had WHT and The Hills Have Eyes is the first rated that's R movie. That's a scary ass movie. Saw. It's a terrifying movie. Do you know that started a trend? In, in The Hills Have Eyes, there's a poster of Jaws that's torn in half. Because it's the future and... No, it's because... Uh-huh. <laughs> Hold on, his stupid anticipatory well, no, guess no, was no, terrible. We, we were courteous <laughs> before. <laughs> Meaning that whatever whatever happened in that movie, it's nothing like what's going on in here. Right. So in Evil Dead, we took a Hills Have Eyes poster and put it in the basement and tore that in half. So does it actually give a message to the audience that it's not? this is nothing compared to what you're seeing because, here? Exactly. Because wow. that's a movie, but this is real. Yes. Yeah. Then in... And this is all Wes Craven back and forth with Sam Raimi. And then in Evil Dead, we... Well, then in... Then in what, what was the first Nightmare on Elm Street? Nightmare on Elm Nightmare Street. Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. 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 Kids watching TV late at night, he's watching the Evil Dead. Uh, he's watching Evil Dead. So then w when we did Evil Dead 2, we took Fre Freddy's hand, uh -huh. Freddy's claw, and put that in the work shed. So they've been sort of communicating little props back and forth for yeah, years. Cool. Does it make it scarier because it's like, hey, people watching the movie have seen Jaws or they've seen The Evil Dead. So it's like, okay, that's that's actually relatable because I've seen that movie and they see it as a movie, so that's realistic. It's all subliminal torment. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You work on horror works in, on many levels. Do you know what was a scary movie was? The Conjuring's were scary movies. I Oof. thought the first one and the second one were pretty. Yeah, I like The Conjuring. But you say that you have to keep the horror going. Those are ones that were kind of like back off a little bit and then go. Maybe there's just a different pace in those. It's more the suspense stuff. Or did you not think they were scary? Um, I, I, I like stuff with pace. I do. Once, it, once stuff gets going. Horror movies, look, horror movies can get slow because they think that slow brooding shots are what it's all about. That's actually fine. And in the original Evil Dead, there are little slow moments, but they're just breathers until it starts again. Okay. Let your ears clear. Are you still? Yeah. Do you still try to see everything, or not really anymore? When you say see everything, like movie, like movie. Are, 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 do you what still you consider yeah, yourself can you still like enjoy no. horror films? You sure, know, you can kind of know how it. <laughs> um, you, all I love the process. I still love the the business. But when I go to see a movie now, I watch actors look at their marks. Mm. Uh, oh. It's all still too technical. You yeah. see actors looking at the oh, marks? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, there's some great ones. <laughs> <laughs> the, seriously, and it's a little flick of the eyes. It's all it is. What's but I know one? what they're looking for. What's a good one? Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to out any of my brother or sister actors, uh, but it's when you're, you have to run, uh, and they're using you know telephoto lens, and then you have to hit a mark. And so you have it. to run. You know it wasn't in the theory of everything. <laughs> in <a> wheelchair. <laughs> Bill Clinton is chasing you, and you're running. <laughs> oh my god! You mean because so, Stephen so Hawking you, has no yeah, use in his life? Oh my yeah. god! Look at his mark. It's a chair. <laughs> yeah. So you get to, you get to the mark, and you have to stop. But you've been running, right? And you're you're not supposed to look at your mark, but you have to, because otherwise, unless you have really good peripheral vision, you're going to miss your mark. And if you miss your mark, you're out of focus. It's sure. that simple. So you go. Where is it? There it is. Everyone is now going to look for that. I, yeah. I never thought to oh, look at that. Bad. Believe me, I've been on sets. I never thought to look at that. <laughs> and I'll tell you, uh, the other thing is watching actors save a line. They'll be in the middle of a line, and I know that they're halfway toward fucking that thing up, and they're going to they're gonna pull their way out of it. Yeah. Shatner's the best at it, because I watch T.J. Hooker. So he's good at almost butchering one and then fixing it? Normally, Shatner talks at a pretty lightning fast pace. He's William Shatner. He's talking. And when sometimes the lines aren't as obvious <laughs> to him, <laughs> he slows down. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes more deliberate in his approach. Until he gets it, then he's back spinning up again <laughs> and talking. <laughs> so some actors, you'll save. You can save a line because you're like, I'm not doing this again. Wow, you can see them actually doing yeah. it. Yeah. 
where you see them bogged down, and then you. But the the great thing is watching them claw their way out of it. But is that almost without make, making them look like they're clawing their way out of it? That's right. a that's a gift, and it might make it look more natural too, because that's when you, sometimes when you're talking, you don't know exactly what you're going to say, so you stop and. That is right. true. There's a lot of uh, old timey actors. They would talk like that, like radio announcers, right? With all the perfect pacing, because that's kind of how they were taught. And then you get in the John Cassavetes, more the avant garde stuff, and you want actors to not act. Yeah, it's right. weird. I can't watch a lot the of the Pacinos, older films. You know what I mean? The Deni- early De Niro's, they got into more of the mannerisms and stutters and sniffles and a lot. Actors now, this is my favorite. Okay, so say say some lines of dialogue to me. Um, I don't know. For dinner, I was thinking maybe we can get some chicken or something. What do you think? Why is he Bruce is looking around. I'm like, what are you looking at? He's looking all what around are you the looking room. At? Me? And now, now I'm going to be that same actor. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go to the store. I don't know. <laughs> get some chickens. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some. Yeah. Uh. Maybe some donuts or whatever. I'm like, where the fuck? What are you looking at? He's looking all I'm around right here. the room. Because they got to. Is it because the actors feel like they have to be doing something Mysterious. to make this special? I think so. They have to have yeah. something else going on. So the audience goes, "What is he doing? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that he's like compelling? A, They're it's being a Mickey compelling. Rourke. That's almost like a Mickey Rourke. But it he's... is. And you know, you watch some actors the very first time, and you go, "Oh my god, they're amazing." And you see him the second time, you go, "Oh." He's doing the that's thing. His thing. No, yeah. that's his shtick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, Nick Cage. Oh. And it's and it's partly depressing, <laughs> yeah. I must say. Okay, that because that reminded me of a Mickey, like just a mysterious guy looking beyond and not kind of. Philip oh, Seymour, Mickey Rourke was great at that. Yeah, he was amazing. Philip Seymour Hoffman had a great way. Watch of him, not the bomb maker in, the in, in uh, Body Heat. Watch him. He's uh, when he's making his little bomb. He's got these little ticks. He's explaining it. You know, here's what you want to do with your thing. Mm-mm. He was really smooth. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now he's lumpy. Yeah, <laughs> but he was smooth before. Smooth then. It's interesting that you bring up the stuff about the horror movies and pacing and like because I feel like it's such a delicate balance. Like there's have you seen Don't Breathe? Uh I haven't, but no, it's No, I've it's, said it's, that while fucking. It's <laughs> Hey lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, same filmmaker from the Evil Dead remake. Right. So, I'm a big fan of Fetty Alvarez. <laughs> this is Fetty Unchained. It's just and it's interesting too because I've seen it and it is absolutely one of these things that kind of starts, where's this going, where's this going, and then it yeah. is unrelenting. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, it starts to drift into uh, gore porny stuff. Not gore porn, but there's some stuff that is just like so squeamish that you're like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, you have to look away. <laughs> but it is, there's a cup of jizz in it at one point that you're just like, oh, I don't that's know. That's right. Uh, I'm sure. Reminds us of work. <laughs> Full cup of jizz. Wow. Jizz breakfast. <laughs> but, uh. but it is completely. Unrelenting. It's it is that style. Well, that thing came uh, out of nowhere, and it, it was tracking lower than what they thought. They were like, "Oh, another ho hum release," and it went, and yeah, it, it popped because word of mouth. I think it still exists. Yeah, they yeah, go, I think Man, that, I, you got to see too. that movie. You yeah. got to see that yeah. movie. What's a movie that scared the shit out of you? Uh, the Tenant by Roman Polanski. I don't know if I saw very that. Very obscure. It. it came out in like seventy six. I saw it in college. Uh, there's no blood. There's no monster. Uh, there's no. I'm trying to think of how many. Only a couple of people wind up losing their actual life, but that thing stuck with me for weeks after because it made me think I was going crazy because okay. the because the, the the lead character was being driven insane, and that's to me that's good horror. It, the where you go, what what is that? It's like the Sixth Sense. Yeah, it's a really clever movie. Again, if you see that movie again, you go, oh. But, you <laughs> know, the, yeah. the first yeah. time you go, really, because it's messing with your head. Very successful movie. I never heard of The Tenet. Yeah. I, I oh, never the tenet. saw it's that. Ver- again, very obscure, but it's like, wow, when filmmakers go creepy. Do things like Roman, like, uh, you talk about Roman Plasti, do things like Rosemary's Baby, I watched that again recently, and there's still very scary moments, like, the, the, you know, the fact that you know that there's something going on next door, but it, it's not as scary. But it's done in an adult fashion, which is why the original Exorcist is so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have Ellen Burstyn, who's like an award-winning actress, going, what's wrong with my baby? It's not... It's not, frankly, with all due respect, a scream queen right. being a bad actor. Friedkin is like, no, no, no. We're going to get like actors to do this. Yeah. And, and they treated it. So they, they've got these great shots of just scanning her brain. Because they're going, we're, we have to find out clinically what the pro-, And they can't find it. The doctors can't find it. Just the whole approach. Right. And then the, 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 if you set up a, a story... The correct way it can really have a great what's a great payoff the setup is it's a priest who's doubting his faith 
He's the guy who gets the kid with the exorcist. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's slam dunk. Yeah. Who, who are you going to torment? A, a priest full of conviction? <laughs> Bullshit. The guy, he'll, he will not get scared or anything. Right. You go after a guy who's like, eh, I'm not sure if I, this is, uh, I'm cut out for this. And that's right. one of those little elements that that's oh, what makes yeah. it good storytelling. Absolutely. Because now, you now to... you're, as an audience, now you're scared. Yeah. You know, um, the fact that Bruce Willis in the air duct in the original Die Hard, mm -hmm. he was an L.A. cop. Why not make him an accountant? Right. He's just a like random guy who doesn't know shit, but yeah. he's smart. Yeah. And he learns and he finds a gun. He's never fired a gun in his life. How does this work? Right. Now I'm scared. But right. if if he's the ex LA cop, that's just a writer's cop out. Yeah. That's a good point. Because wow, I yeah. pitched, I pitched it to a Hollywood writer. I go, I go, why didn't they do that with an accountant? He goes, How would he have won? <laughs> I'm like, that's your problem. <laughs> right. Now. As a writer, we'll figure it out. Right. Right. But as an audience member, I'd be terrified if that guy is an accountant. You're less invested if he's a cop because a cop has those tools already. Yes. He should. Yeah. Yeah. And if yes. he doesn't get out of it, you go, what a lousy cop. Yeah. <laughs> Good. He should have been killed. He was terrible at his job. Wow, yeah. That's fascinating. Exactly. And the exorcist, by the way, you're be they remove all other options so it can only be an exorcist. It can only be that. And it makes yeah. it realistic. And they also got Linda Blair. They got, they got choice casting. Yes. Again, choice. It was a good move. It was a good decision. Yeah. And look, William Friedkin is a very intense filmmaker. And he's at the height of his powers there. Yeah. You know, filmmakers at the height of their powers are great. Did you see, I know we have to wrap up, did you see part three? Part two was not good, The Exorcist part two. Linda Blair was also in that. But did you see part three, which was kind of an extension of part one? No, because part two sucks so bad. I didn't. see I'm part telling you, three. part three, 1990, was 17 years later, <laughs> and it picks up. It's really good. No, no, I know. I'm telling you, it yeah, sounds like it's gonna be terrible. I, me and my buddy watched it as a joke, and we were like two fucking teenage girls, <laughs> just <laughs> frightened. Not just because we were dressed that way, but we were really <laughs> frightened watching it. It was with George C. Scott who plays the part that uh, Lee J. Cobb played, right? And uh, the, the priest is in it, and also uh, Brad Dourif is in it. It sounds horrible. It I'm does telling sound you, horrible. Part Wait, three is good, but okay. I tell you, sometimes it's good. To to bring back a franchise years later. For instance, <laughs> Ash vs. Evil Dead yeah. is Sundays. on Stars. Back from the dead. Sundays at 8 p.m. Uh, you can go to bruce-campbell.com or at Groovy Bruce. Always good talking to you're you, man. Really Thanks for having really me. You're one of my yeah. favorite guests ever. Thank you very much. What? Can you say something as Reagan? Well, there you go again. Uh, well, they are barbarians. Well, Start bombing in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy, there, there we go. I had my salad tossed by Cicely Tyson. <laughs>